Wow, come everyone. Today we'll have an amazing lich build over 1,500 corruption. So over here, we're learning this build from Uncensored Link on Billy Billy from the Chinese community. So let's briefly have a look at the gameplay of the lich build and why is it amazing. So yes, pretty excited and lots of viewers has been requesting a lich build because this is supposed to be a top meta build for the arena as well. So liches are very sustainable. You lich a lot of life. You have tons of warding. And the best part of this is, this is a summoning lich build with exploding zombies. Yes, you'll be sacrificing zombies and also making them explode. And using the unique rings, you'll be constantly generating and continuous, continuously cycle zombies. So this is like a lich necromancer build, which I love about. Now briefly explain what is happening in the build and why he doesn't have zombies on the list of the skills because he will be summoning zombies by using potions using experimental effects. And then zombies will be blinked next to him as they teleport using transport, blinking over to other places. Having the cycle of precedence, of precedence, the particular unique ring that allows him to revive zombies upon their dying, allows him to continuously have more zombies. And finally, he can be sacrificing zombies for even more damage. And the build will be dealing tons of physical damage together with tons of minions. The build have extremely good burst potential, which I really want to demonstrate to you guys as well in terms of single target. So as you guys can see, the build is quite survivable and the build does have tons of warding gain compared to other builds to survive in the higher corruptions. Now, one of the reasons I love about this build is that it is automatic. As I'm going to explain in the skill trees, zombies will automatically be summoned, automatically sacrifice themselves and then automatically get summoned again. All you have to do is run around, keep up your rapier form, and this build is pretty much one button or zero button. You just have to run around and you don't even have to do anything. You're just blinking around so the zombies follow you and so you travel a little faster across the map. They will do all the job, they will sacrifice themselves, they will summon themselves, and they will repeat the cycle. Now, while looking for more versions of the Lich build, some of my viewers also sent me this video for Milky B BK over here, who you can also see he was learning from the Chinese player as well who also mentioned that he was learning from the same build as well that we're learning. So you can see there's a lot of notes from the Chinese player about the details for this build. So let's briefly have a look at his version because this one actually provides us with some demonstration to the single boss fight. So over here, we're looking at a level 860 corruption, the story boss with the Emperor of Corpses. And you can see that this build has amazing burst potential. And again, this is a demonstration of a tier 4 Jura. And again, guys, this build deals tons of damage. And yes, this is a wonderful build that allows him to stack over 20,000 warding and deals tons of damage using our zombies. Finally, we can see a small demonstration of the showcasing against the shade over 800 corruption. So similar case can also be dealt with 1,500 corruption. You are summoning zombies and the more zombies you summon, the more damage you deal and the they explode, you deal even more damage. So the build is incredibly fun and also stacks tons of warding in terms of survival while continuously summoning zombies as they explode, dealing more damage. Now before we dive into the builder's guide, a big shout out and also thank you to Ancestor Link on Billy Billy for demonstrating and also explaining this build into more details. I'll have this article available to you guys and you can right click and then go to translate to English if you want to read this out. So a big shout out to him and if you guys are Chinese, make sure you follow him on Billy Billy and also see the latest update for the Lich build. And second to that, I do believe Milky BK over here had a really good demonstration with variety of replays and also some of his own insights of how to follow the build and how to craft it. So make sure to follow him on YouTube as well and also check out his guides. Now, a Chinese friend on Setter Link has provided tons of notes and also his builder's guide in Chinese. I have translated this one into the English Last Epoch Builder's Guide, together with his notes for alternative adjustment for the build. So notice that different builds were using two rings at the same time. At the same time, the second build will use one red ring together with one of the relic that's provided him with tons of maximum warding gain. So there will be two variations of the build, which I'll briefly go through after explaining the build to you guys. So let's briefly go through the concept and also the core skills for this build. So right away, if we come over to the skill trees, you can see that they will be summoning volatile zombies and will be exploding zombies using sacrifice. And this will apply physical damage increase and also scales on the minion's maximum health. And this is why we're also building minion's maximum health. 
this will cause a chain reaction of exploding zombies and together with the ability to revive zombies that we have summoned using this unique ring, we can be getting infinite zombie spams which can allow us to sacrifice them to deal even more damage. Now if you happen to have found this particular Jogon Queen's build and have summoned volatile zombies, this is going to be amazing because you can pop potions and then you get zombies and having zombies, the rings will keep those zombies alive as you sacrifice them to deal tons of damage. The zombies themselves will also explode dealing damage. Together with the ability for zombies to summon even more minions and also even more skeleton vanguard, you can then explode those minions using sacrifice to deal even more damage. Now because we also have a chance to auto cast in sacrifice, sometimes during the fights guys, you don't even have to cast sacrifice because the zombies were automatically sacrificing themselves at 100% chance and also with even reduced mana. Now the build has some incredible survivability using the rapier form. And not only is this form super survivable and revives you up on getting to 0 HP, it also provides you with tons of damage boost, attack speed, critical strike, and also increased casting speed. This is going to be an incredible ultimate that allows you to deal tons of damage while summoning zombies and also becoming more survivable with rip blood over here. So the build is very well rounded and this build will allow you to deal the most damage while summoning zombies and have a great time as a lich summoner. Now if you guys like the creative concept of this build, I also recommend coming over to our Discord channel and we have a special event that is ongoing. This is where members and also viewers can share your build and also I will be highlighting and also showcasing your build each of the week. We will be picking one of the best meta builds for the week and also picking a fun and also creative build for the week. You can be highlighting and also submitting your builds over here for us to have a look. And the winner of the weekly build will also get a special prize reward including Amazon gift cards and maybe a cash reward which we'll be revealing in each of the weeks. And best of all guys, as we have more creative build of the week, we'll be adding to our list of the highlighted endgame meta build for last epoch for each of the seasons. This means you can be always finding great builds that will be creative and also fun to be playing for last epoch. So if you guys haven't joined us on our Majestic Last Epoch Discord, make sure you do so because I'll be answering a lot of questions, providing a lot of feedbacks, and also we have a question section if you have any questions regarding towards the build and regarding to the future content. Now, because we're already looking at the skills, might as well go through the skills and also pass it briefly. In terms of red blood, we'll be converting additional health gain into warding gain. And together with the ability to have even more warding retention, this allows us to rank up to over 20 or 30,000 warding as you can see in the replays. And followed by that, repair forms will give us a lot of critical chance, critical multipliers, lots of good damage bonus, and a lot of attack speed and also casting speed. With the ability to scale armor per intelligence and also increase resistance per intelligence, this is very survivable, gains increased effect from having potions, and again, it revives you once you reach zero health. Now, one of our biggest core skills is going to be summoning volatile zombies. The zombies we summon will also summon additional summon units like the Parasites and also Venga upon dying. The zombies will also provide us with additional warning and also even more damage with the sacrificing chances. So this way we will spend even less mana while sacrificing minions while dealing tons of damage. And yes guys, one of our core spells will be coming from the physical damage through sacrifice. We will be sacrificing minions and providing them with higher maximum health means that they will have even higher damage multipliers. Together with increased damage against bleeding enemies, we can also be bleeding enemies. And this allows us to chain sacrifice multiple minions that deals tons of damage. Finally, our defensive mobility skills will be coming from transplant, gaining additional haze and also frenzy as we teleport, gaining additional armor and also durations, and also gaining more fear upon rival. Now this is my personal twist, after learning so many high level build, I realized this particular value point is actually not bad as you teleport into enemies. And you can see in other builds, they have went for a little more damage using transplant, but I do prefer having the instant kill threshold to 15% than perking over here. What you are sacrificing with those 3 points is a bit of cooldown and also a bit of casting speed. But having the fear upon arrival can be very good to allow you to teleport into multiple enemies in the higher level dungeons over 1500 corruption. Now in terms of the passives, we're going with more intelligence, vitality, and also more warding gain. 
Over here, we'll go over to the necromancer tree while gaining additional warding gain and also chance to summon even more skeleton vanguard. We'll come over to the warlock tree to gain even more intelligence and also mana regeneration. Finally, coming over to the lich side, we'll be gaining tons of intelligence, increased health, increased damage with physical penetration, and finally, additional critical strike multipliers, critical chances, and even more casting speed. Now, because we're picking a lot of intelligence, as you guys can see over here, if you guys remember, a lot of our skills are actually scaling with intelligence, like the ones over here. Increasing armor with intelligence, increasing resistance with intelligence, and here we have over 160 intelligence. Now, coming over to the gears. We mentioned earlier, the core items will be coming from the cycle of precedence and this will allow us to revive zombies. If you can craft intelligence or mini health on those rings, this is going to be incredible for the core concept of the build. Now, followed by that, one of the premium items you can use is going to be the Jungle Queen having 12 potions. If you do not have this particular belt crafted with summoning zombies, I do recommend just having an experimental belt that allows you to summon zombies, and that will be enough having 4 to 6 potions. But ideally guys, having 16 potions means you can do something wonderful as you saw in the replays, instantly dealing super high burst damage with lots of potions and also lots of zombies. Now as for the unique weapon, we're getting the Mad Alchemist Wound over here to gain additional critical strike multiplier, spell critical chance, and also even more physical penetration. And as you can see on the gears, we're getting additional physical spell critical chance, additional spell critical chance, and also spell critical multipliers. We won't get close to 100%, but we'll get close to 50% if you're using the right setup, and also the idols. Now as for the final unique of choice, there are two versions of the build guys. One is that you can be using the Twisted Heart, and this will allow you to cast your narcotic spells and also elemental spells, well mostly narcotic spells, as we continuously to be casting our Rip Blood, which is going to be narcotic spell now. And this will allow us to gain even more warding. The alternative version, if we come over here, is that you can see the relic over here. We have adjusted the relic into the erase relic, which will allow us to gain up to 16 per up to 6% of the maximum warding from the enemies. And this is very powerful in the late stage of the game to get over 20, 30, or even 40,000 warding by slaying one rare enemy. Together with the change up for one of the red rings, you become extremely durable, over 1,500 corruption. So yes, the second version is our alternative tank version, while the first version is more for damage, having more zombies. Now in terms of the exalted items, I have opt for additional armor and also critical strike damage reduction, just so that we can be stacking tons of armor. Together with the additional armor that you'll be gaining by scaling intelligence using your rapier form, you'll have close to 70% armor using this build once you transform. So you can see that we'll be getting intelligence, increased spell critical chance, and over here, increased sacrifice rank and also increased spell damage, together with increased armor, increased intelligence, and also reduced damage from critical strike. Now this is also the similar case for the boots, which allows us to take less damage from critical strike, and also the gloves, which allows our armor to mitigate damage over time. Our amulet will also mitigate damage over time, which is going to be very important to keep ourselves alive in over 1,500 corruption. Finally, for the catalyst, it is recommended to use a spell critical chance catalyst together with additional critical chance, critical strike multipliers, and any resistance you are missing for the build. Now, if we're briefly coming over to the idols, you can see there will be two crucial idols that allows you to convert your potion health into warding, and this is why we're using those two together with additional physical spell critical chance. And this is the same case with other big idols, getting additional bonus health and also spell critical chance with physical spells. Remember guys, sacrifice is gonna be a physical damage spell. And for the remainder of the slots, we'll be going with health percentage, health, and also increased armor and also health to get the most stacking out of our health and also armor and also gaining more warding. In terms of the blessings, we'll go with critical strike multipliers, all resistance, increased armor, increase armor, and also warding gain, and also warding threshold. You can change this one into warding per second as well, but because we're spamming a lot of potions, getting more warding is actually not bad over here. Now you can also opt for critical strike avoidance over here, if you can manage to get yourself over 75% resistance. But because we're a little short on resistance, I decided to get this one over the critical strike avoidance. 
because we have so much critical strike damage reduction over here on the gears. Now, just a small note over here. If you're looking at a Chinese friend's build or if you're looking at Milky's build, you can see there is a variety. I have targeted and also changed the build for over 1,500 setup with more armor, with more health, and also with even more damage. And those are idealistic builds, guys. You're not expected to have all the right effects over here, even the sealed ones. But if you're missing some resistance, you can easily adjust this one by sacrificing some damage over here. Now, because this is the first introduction for the Lich build, I have also found a leveling guide for you guys on Max Row. So make sure to use the links in the descriptions as I provide more information for you guys to have a better experience trying different builds. Now, coming over to the skill rotations and also tips for the build. You can see right away that we're constantly summoning zombies using our potions and they will be teleported using transplant. You want to be sacrificing minions as they will deal even more damage. Together with abilities to manually summon more zombies as you use your potions, you should always be in your rapid form, which will give you additional armor and also additional survivability. Together with abilities to gain even more armor as you teleport, you shouldn't have too much trouble against the echoes. And as for a small tip, because we'll be auto-casting sacrifice with 100% chance while zombies are exploding, you can save yourself some time as you progress through the map by not spamming sacrifice. Yes, this is the ultimate this is the automatic part about the build, because as I mentioned earlier, the harder it is, the zombies will do all the work. They will summon themselves using potions, they will explode, sacrifice themselves and also minions around them, and then resummon themselves with a unique ring, and the whole process will be automatic. You can of course manually cast sacrifice, but this actually costs a little more mana, because you don't get a reduction to mana from the skill trees. Now in terms of bossing, this build is extremely powerful. Firstly, go into the rapier form and then summon your zombies and summon more zombies with your potions. As you summon more zombies, as you sacrifice them, the boss will disappear. It takes a little time to get used to the rotations, guys, but the damage number is bonkers as you summon more zombies as you kill them quickly over here. And finally, guys, if you're going for the shade, make sure you have your horde of zombies. And once the shade has spawned, make sure you summon your zombies and then you can summon even more zombies using your potions. So notice over here Milky is summoning more zombies with his potions. He got to zero potions within a few seconds. He can wait a little bit for the zombies, but your zombies will also get revived because of your rain. So this means you deal tons of burst damage as you summon your zombies. Now if you guys find my videos and also guides helpful, and also want to support my passion in making more guides and also more videos for the last epoch and also more games to come like Path of Exile, please consider joining me on Patreon, and also here I have created my Ko-Fi page. You can also support me directly through donations, but supporting me continuously with one of those membership will mean a lot for my future updated videos and to become financially sustainable so I can be continuing making videos for you guys and doing what I love the most, and that is to share and also teach our communities as I dive into different games and making more guides for you guys. And as you guys are gonna see in the future, I'll have different ranks and also perk advantages and also special events and also special features for members like account reviews, perfecting the build for you guys and also co-op time play and also even special future videos for you guys on your special build for different members.